Dear brothers and sisters, know for a fact that Allah is worthy of all praise. And so we praise him and we seek his aid and we seek his forgiveness and we seek his protection. First from the evil within our own selves and from the negative consequences of our own actions. We recognize that whomever Allah guides will not go astray. Whomever he leaves straying and erring will find no other guidance. We bear witness there is nothing worthy of our worship except for Allah, along with our partners, and we bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his servant, is his slave, is his messenger. Allah tells us in his book, he says, Oh, you who have accepted faith, be mindful of Allah, as is his right, and do not die except as Muslims. He tells us again, O oh, you who have accepted faith, be mindful of Allah and speak a word to the truth. He will rectify for you your affairs. He will forgive your sins. Whoever obeys Allah in his messenger has achieved tremendous success. Allah has spoken the truth. My prayer is that the dua of Musa salam. My Lord, expand for me my chest, make easy for me my task. Loosen the knot from my tongue so they understand my speech. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, today is that time. We're going to look at Surah Al Ariya. I say it's that time because at least once a year I look at this Surah. One of the, uh, the short Surahs. Believed to be a Meccan surah, surah 100, surah al-Adiyah. Uh, 
Translated sometimes as the speed or the charging speeds, those who charge. And its reference is to war horses or any speed that you would use in a battle context is charging into battle. And it begins with some beautiful imagery and ends with a, a brief but very important reminder for all of us. Allah begins, I'll be letting the shaitan rajim. وَالْعَالِيَةِ ضَبْحَا فَالْمُورِيَةِ قَدْحَا فَالْمُغِيرَةِ صُبْحَا فَأَطَرَنَا بِهِ نَقْعَا فَوَصَّتْنَا بِهِ جَمْعَا He begins in his first few ayahs painting the picture of this horse and he's swearing by it. And remember, when Allah swears by something in his creation, he's professing his greatness. There's something great about this thing that Allah is swearing by. And then after he makes his, this oath that he's swearing by, he brings it to a statement of truth that is being uh, upheld, in a sense, by this oath. So what is Allah swearing by? He's swearing by the charging steeds that pants. Something that might get lost on us because this is not our immediate association or appreciation for war. So try and let's uh, use our imaginations and put ourselves in that place where the cavalry was a war machine. And the unit of that cavalry was this beast that by design could run, carry on his back, will say its master. And Allah is describing how it's charging forward to the extent that you can see or hear that it's panting. Other words, it's moving. It's breathing heavily. Then he continues, and it strikes sparks with its hooves. So the ground, which will have rocks and stones hitting the hooves, as this beast is moving, it's moving with such ferocity that you see sparks being kicked up. <laughs> Allah continues, who make dawn rage. So it's giving you now the context, the time of day. This is early in the morning. This beast is up early in the morning. It's still dark outside. Running, charging, kicking up sparks. Then Allah says, raising a cloud of dust. And so we should be able to see it. Charging, breathing heavily, sparks flying with from its strides and the strength in its strides, kicking up dust, and it's dark. And then Allah concludes this segment, plunging into the midst of the enemy. Allah is bringing up the greatness of this deed, this deed while it's in this particular action. And then he continues the statement, Inna insana li rabbihi Certainly the human being to his master or to his Lord is ungrateful. This was the main statement. But now we have a contrast. We have the steed doing what it's doing for the sake of its master, and then Allah is saying, but this human being, this human being is ungrateful to his Lord. Then Allah elaborates more. وَإِنَّهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ لَشَهِيدٌ Certainly he is a witness to that. In other words, the human being is a witness to his own ingratitude. وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدٌ And he 
he is certainly in regards to his love for the material things. It's intense. Our love, our creator says, for material things is intense. فَلَا يَعْلَمُ إِذَا بُعْثِرَ مَا فِي الْقُبُورِ وَخُسِّلَ مَا فِي الصُّدُورِ إِنَّ رَدَّهُمْ بِهِمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ لَا خَبِيرٌ He is truly excessive in his love of wealth. Doesn't he know that when the contents of the grave come forth and the secrets that are in the hearts are uncovered, doesn't he know on that day his Lord will have been well acquainted with him all along. SubhanAllah. The reminder here, which is humbling for me, and I think should be for all of us here. Allah is saying, can't we at least be like this steed? This steed is so dedicated to his Lord to its master, the one who rides it. The one who's riding that steed into battle is the one with the battle agenda. The steed, by the way, has no war agenda. It doesn't know what this fight is about. It's just following commands. Run, full speed, full speed ahead. All right, on it. It's not saying, oh, you know, it's early. Sun's not even up. Can we wait? Can we do this later? It's not running half speed, jogging along. It's not over there eating grass. It's dedicated to this mission. And what did, what did the rider of this horse do anyway? Did he create the horse? He maybe fed it, trained it. What has Allah done for us? He created us. He feeds us. He has taught us. He's given us examples in his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of examples. He's given us a way, and he's given us the faculty, the ability to follow that way to success here in this life, and most importantly, when we return to him in the next life. And he's saying, oh, human beings, where's your gratitude? What little thanks are you showing? And what's getting in the way of us showing our gratitude? For the law cites is our love, our excessive love for the material things. It's not wrong for us to love wealth. It's not wrong. It's actually part of our design. It's not wrong. If you want to be wealthy, that's not a negative thing. But the question is, what perspective do you have it in? What are you doing with that wealth? Allah praises those who spend their wealth in his cause. And there's multiple causes that you can spend your wealth in. Allah causes us to be good stewards of whatever he has granted and provided for us. So we have to reflect, what has Allah provided me? Am I a good steward of it? How am I spending it? When you return, when we all return to Allah, we'll be asked two things about whatever wealth we have. How did you get it? And how did you spend it? And we want to have good answers for those. Good answers in the sight of our Lord for those things. How did you earn it? How did you acquire it? And then what did you spend it on? During this entire time, Allah was well acquainted with our hearts. When he's scanning us, he's scanning not our forms and our shapes, He's not looking at the external. He's not even concerned with the wealth and possessions that you have. He's looking at what is the quality of your heart and then proceeding from that, what are your actions? 
And the imagery that Allah presents in this surah of the steed charging forth, we could imagine and we've seen, if we haven't seen it in person, we've seen videos, I'm sure, of the beauty and, and the majesty of a horse, right? But Allah's not talking about here what it looks like. We can scoot up some more. It's gonna be more people coming in because nobody's outside today. Allah is not talking about how good looking the horse is. Allah is praising the commitment that this horse has to following the orders and being obedient to its right at its core. And our challenge is to see that, to recognize that, and recognize that Allah created us to be better than a horse. We should be able to outdo that horse in obedience to our Lord and our Master. May Allah give us success in our mission to be obedient to Him. May He forgive us for our sins. Amin. Ya Allah, Allah. Brothers and sisters, we must be mindful of Allah. I want us to think about what do we have to do to avoid being outdone by the speed? What does that mean for us? Practically speaking, in our particular context. How do we avoid being the subject of Allah's criticism in this surah when he says, in al insana li rabbihi la kanu, the human being to his Lord is very ungrateful. How do we show gratitude for Allah's many favors towards us? My advice and my reminder for us all today, for myself first, is do not hold back from the gifts that Allah has planted within you. Don't hold back from those gifts. Be as he sent his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you except as a mercy to the world, which indicates for us as the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we should be also as a mercy to the world. Let's not get intimidated thinking about the entirety of what's going on on planet Earth. Our world, our day-to-day -day world that we live in, we wake up into, the people that we see on a regular basis, that's our world. In that world, in that realm, we should be a source of mercy. Bringing into that environment Allah's mercy, His grace, His compassion, His wisdom, His guidance. That should be showcased. Not holding that back. Letting people experience that. A mercy to our own selves. Taking care of our own selves. Refining our own selves. And then experiences I've been preaching over and over again, our families, how are we in our households? How are we being experienced by those who experience us the most on a regular basis? This is how, this is how we show gratitude to our Lord, mm -hmm. understanding that our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he needs us for nothing. We can't increase him in any sort of way. So the service that we do for him, we're doing really for our own benefits. It's elevating us. He's put in us the capacity to elevate to a very high level. We show gratitude for that gift by realizing it. We should be on that journey charging forward to elevate ourselves for his sake. 
Where we move, we encourage what's good. That's what we do as Muslims. We see negativity, we discourage that in our world. We do that for Allah's sake. This is our charging forward. This is how we have a chance to outdo that seed. So my reminder to myself and to all of us today is charge forward. Charge forward for your Lord. ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحان الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أي الصلاة أي الصلاة أي الفلاة أي الفلاة قد قامت صلاته قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله